this is Governor Bobber. I like good day, doctors. George Allen here. Good day, doctors. Hey, good Friday evening, everyone. It is February 10th. We are about 12 days away from the Shamrock Shake. And, uh, 12 days. And you can always go to Dwight'sWorld.com. And uh, I've got a running clock on there. Cutting <laughs> it down to the second. You know, watch this. A refresher. You know. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. By the way, you know, I, they had, uh, I was over at the Giant, and they had pumpkin spice tasty cake crumpets. They still had those? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been, I've, I, I've been kind of tempted in the past to do something about that, but I thought, eh, I'll just skip that for now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been a busy week for news and information this week, you know, um, it's almost, almost time if you're going to start gardening, if you're going to start your plants from seeds. Or do what I do. Go to the nursery and buy them. Then when they die, you go back to the nursery and buy some more. <laughs> but if you're going to start your plants from seed, start planting this week. If you're going to start from seeds. <laughs> yeah, well, when we've, it's, it's, we've had a couple of days that have been very spring-like. I mean, well, the crocuses are out. I noticed that this morning. That- that happens. I mean, all you need is a few days like this, and the mm-hmm. crocuses thing. All of a sudden, they think it's like March or April, mm-hmm. and they start popping out. I mean, that's and you know, they don't die either. They'll just wither away and they'll come back. Yeah, I mean, those are those are annuals. I mean, my mother loved crocuses. I mean, that's mm-hmm. one of the things. So it's like, yeah, every you you just see them pop up, and they have their season, and it's always it's always interesting I, to see the how. Different different plants and vegetables have just kind of different seasons. And I'm not sure if it's fake news or something. I just saw this on YouTube once. You know, saffron. They say saffron is the stuff from inside of the crocus, the yellow part. That's what they make saffron out of. It does not seem right. Saffron has a smell to it. I don't think those things have smells to them. I, you know, something I, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever tried to smell a crocus in all my years. Never really thought about it. There's no smell to the crocus. That's why nobody smells them. <laughs> but um, we had, uh, they finally shot down that uh, Chinese balloon. And uh, all of a sudden, there were four during the Trump administration. And they didn't tell. <laughs> yeah. Again, I mean, why, why did they shoot it down? Does any of this really surprise you, though, that the Chinese have been spying on us like this? No. And, you know, and they, we found out they've been spying on uh, the Vietnamese, the Indians, the Japanese. They've been, they've been flying these balloons all over the place. Yeah, I mean, and, I don't, there's, no, there's no telling how many of these balloons they actually have, you know, and mm-hmm. where exactly they all are. They're, these kind of things are not that easy to track, but the whole Chinese thing about it was a weather balloon that was blown off course at first. It was like... Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> I think we should just send a bunch of U2s over China. You know, but not with this administration. This administration is not capable of doing anything like that. Well, yeah, I mean, their their reaction to this initially was it's kind of like, well, we don't really want to do anything because we don't want to hurt our relationship with China. It's like, oh, whose country is this? What are you guys talking about? Okay, this administration is suffering from battered wife syndrome. You know, the Chinese are not our friends. You know, they just keep going, you know, this administration keeps going back to China time and time again, thinking if we're just a little bit nicer to them, they'll be nicer back to us. And that's really a shame. A real shame, frankly, because, uh, frankly, um... Uh, they have, um, they're not that nice to us. <laughs> uh, I think um, where China comes, we really need to look at containment again as a policy for China. Keeping them, um, 
contained. Uh, the the head of council on formation, uh, Rick Haas, was on uh, Brian Kilmeade's show last week or the week before. And he made an interesting point how Japan is ready to arm up and challenge China in the Pacific. Which I think would be great to see more people, you know, challenging the Chinese communists. Well, at least make them aware that, you know, they're not they're not just going to sit back and and let China try to run run over things. I mean, there's no doubt that China has stepped up their kind of aggression. And, you know, all we have to do is look at, you know, what's hap- what happened in Hong Kong. I mean, mm-hmm. remember, it wasn't it wasn't really that long ago, right, that we were wearing kind of those free Hong Kong. Yeah, free Hong Kong, yeah. You know, what's happened? <laughs> Yeah, no, they they clamp down with their laws, and you know they've been they jail any any kind of dissident, you know, anything like that. Uh, you know, we, you, you really don't really allow for uh, any protests, you know, about the whole you know anniversary of Tiananmen Square. Uh, you can they repress their own people on COVID. Uh, you know, people died as a result of that. I mean, this this is just you know how how different too the policy changes. With the change in administration, uh, yep. you know, we I think we we've, we've talked about this about a lot of different things, but you know, the Trump policy, you know, with a lot of things that happened around the world versus the Biden policy mm-hmm. and the reactions, right? I mean, you know, we we've been watching this for what is it now, 352 days in Ukraine. Yep. This is something that was unlikely to have occurred with Trump being in office, but you know. Putin, Putin looks for an opening. He figures out, oh, you know, it's just Joe Biden and Democrats. What are they going to do? Mm-hmm. You know, and they've they've been they've just been, you know, I don't know if you saw that. I mean, the our I think it was our Defense Department reported that, you know, they estimate that the Russians have lost 180 thousand people. Yeah, uh, you know, Ukraine Ukrainians have, Ukrainians have lost about 180 hundred thousand, but mm-hmm. the Russians just keep throwing people right. I mean, this is mm-hmm. it, you. In Ukraine, people voluntarily, you know, took up arms to go fight. Yep. In Russia, well, they had to be conscripted, right? People went against their. I mean, I didn't. I didn't even realize until this past week. I was reading the Wall Street Journal that we were having this influx of Russian immigrants, people who were mm-hmm. trying to get away from all of this, <laughs> and so we're trying to find a way to help them get into this country uh, and get away from all that. And also, you know, here's another thing about um, Vladimir Putin, for what it's worth, he basically dusted off Ho Chi Minh's playbook on, um, you know, he thinks, you know, like Ho Chi Minh, you know, would have 15, 14 year old kids, he'd send them out to die in the Vietnam War. And uh, that's the next step probably for uh, Putin. I mean, he's just sending basically um, bodies there, you know, because they're running out of hardware. And it's funny. There, it looks like the Russian uh, fabled military was just is just a fable, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, and you're you know, as you were saying, I mean, you know, in essence, they are throwing, they're basically just throwing bodies at this thing. They, you know, people who don't know what they're doing, but they're sacrificing their own <laughs> citizens to just gain a little bit of territory, yeah. uh, you know, and and so this is this has become an extremely long grind. And you know, if, if not for the population advantage that Russia has over Ukraine, you know, this they would be they would be in big trouble by now, uh, in, a, in all of the respects. But you know, Putin keeps throwing these people out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I was in Russia, I'd, I'd definitely be in hiding or fleeing somewhere, so I wouldn't get thrown into this thing. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's like, um, and it's we're, all, we're I think we're at a year now, or coming up right on a year. Because uh, I believe they started the war right after the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, it was like February. I think February twenty three was the. Like they came. I think that was the last. You know, I think I guess I rolled in on the twenty fourth or something like that. But you know, mm-hmm. here we are. What is it? The tenth. So you know, we're we're two weeks away yeah. from the one year anniversary, which is you know about th- it'll be about three hundred sixty three days or whatever you three hundred sixty mm-hmm. days. Longer than Putin thought. You know, there's no doubt that Putin thought he was going to be able to roll in and get this wrapped up in a matter oh, yeah. of days. But you know, he's been—I think he's been surprised at the resolve of Ukraine and how much the West has, you know, pulled together 
to supply yeah. armaments, you know, and training, uh, you know, to there. So, you know, it, it, it is remarkable. Here we are at almost a year mm-hmm. and we haven't had any official NATO involvement, right? I mean, they, they this, you know, the member, it, these countries have been, you know, giving them aid, uh, but without having to put troops on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I guess, you know, this is basically, um, this is, and we're not, there are no American troops on the ground also. That was the big concern to everybody, how they're going to send troops there and blah, blah, blah. Uh, look at this. The Ukrainians have beat back the the mighty Russian army, or the fabled Russian army, I should say. It's, um, it's a testament to, and it's not going to get easier for Russia. It's only going to get harder from this point. What kind of a, this gives them a really big boost that we kept the Russians from taking Kiev for a whole year. And uh, they can't keep this up for another year. They're going to have to come up with, they're going to have to sue for peace. They're going to have to come up with a way, get an armistice done with the Ukrainians. Because, I mean, honestly, right now, that's their only option. I mean, this war of attrition, they're going to lose this war of attrition because it's just a matter of time before Putin's health gives out on them. One enterprising general just decides to get you know creative and takes them out. You know, uh, Vladimir Putin, you know, is on borrowed time now. This is becoming his Afghanistan. And that's why, you know, I think that's why we just keep so give, keep giving support to the Ukrainians. Uh, we make sure that um, they keep, uh, you know, keep the pressure on. We give them the tank, you know, they've got tank, German tanks are coming in. Uh, and so on. And, yeah, and, our, and, our, and our tanks will get there when we actually have some to give them. So Yes. It's like, you know, um, you know, we're also down to our cruise missile stockpile is not what it was either. They need, you know, they just need to go, they need to, the Pentagon has not bought new missiles in a while. And um, I think maybe it'd be nice if we had a nice stockpile of cruise missiles and tanks. You know, because um, the big challenge is going to come with China. I think, although I do think China might be like the Russians. <laughs> Their army strength to project power could be very, very fabled opposed to uh, in reality. Uh, well, I, mean, I think. I, mean, I, I do think that China probably looks at what Russia's done in Ukraine and thinks that, you know, what, everything that they've done, we're you know whatever. If we decide to do anything, we're not going to follow that playbook. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You know that's they, you, you lose. I mean, you, China's got a huge population. They could probably throw you know a ton of people at anything. Mm-hmm. But you know, just throwing people at the problem in a war situation is doesn't. It's kind really of like Democrat people. policies on fixing the economy. Just throw money at it and they'll fix the problem. That's just, you know, the, oh, we'll win this. We'll just throw some more people to die at this. We'll just keep doing it and they'll fix the problem. They'll do the exact same. And the Democrats do that with uh, money. You know, um, and speaking of Democrats and money, I want to say this is probably one of the worst State of the Unions I've ever seen in a while. Well, it's, it's interesting because Biden, I mean, he's hitting the road. I mean, as part of, I think, a, you know, to, to gear up for running, you know, for in 2024. So he's mm-hmm. running around the country, but he, he's trying to tell people that, you know, that state of the union just shows that, you know, he's more than mentally fit, you know, to continue on. And the man role. lied like at least four times that I counted before I turned off the television. Yeah. Um, you know, look, and I'm, and I'm no fan of, you know, people shouting out things like, you know, you're a liar. I mean, I, I don't think that does, mm-hmm. That does anybody any good? I'm not, even, but I'm not. I'm also at the same point in time not convinced that the State of the Union speech has much sway or hold or anything mm-hmm. is worth much anymore. It's just, it's just another political event, uh, mm-hmm. and you know, with a lot of glad handing, pol- you know, polishing up your own resume and then maybe yeah. announcing a few programs, with no promise that anything that you announce as a program will ever get enacted anyway. But yeah, yeah you know. The, and the media's culpability and 
and really not holding Biden's feet to the fire. I mean, what what Marjorie Taylor Greene was doing, you know, was was in essence speaking the truth because, you know, Biden keeps trying to tout, you know, the economy and everything that they've done. But, you know, when he, you know, this administration was still standing on, you know, we're, you know, we're lowering, you know, we're, we're lowering inflation and lowering gas prices. Mm -hmm. It's like, in, in, you know, in relation to what? Not in relation to when you took office. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, the price of gas is still a dollar and a quarter to dollar thirty five cents higher than it was when you took office. Yeah. And Which is significant. Inflation. The price of eggs. I mean, the price of eggs is, what, six bucks now? People are um, people who have, are raising chickens are going to have to like kind of uh, guard their uh, chicken house because uh, people are going to be coming in to steal the eggs at night. You know, that I will say that this has been an interesting look at raising chickens, okay? Mm -hmm. Some people are like, you know, who raise chickens, they say, well, you know, who's laughing now? But mm -hmm. the, the, you know, if you read the articles about, you know, people who've gone into this, you, you know, they buy these, they buy these chicks mm -hmm. and then they, re and then they buy all this equipment and they build mm -hmm. the hen house and yeah. whatever, but they don't really realize is that it takes, it takes a while before the chicks become old enough to actually lay an egg. Yeah. And they only and they're only really good for laying eggs for about two years. Mm -hmm. And and then and then they really ought to be slaughtered and and used to, to be eaten. Uh, things like that. Uh, but then you do have to protect, you know, the chicks because they have predators like foxes. I mean they've got I've got you yeah. know I've got a friend of ours who's just down there on Muncaster Mill Road and mm -hmm. you know they they've been raising chicks yeah. and, and everything like that. They've had they have chickens and they do use some of the eggs. Sometimes they have a surplus of eggs at times, mm -hmm. but they've lost they've lost chickens to foxes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and stuff like that. So you you've got to watch out for that kind of stuff that happens. And that's uh, I mean, also the cost of getting started in the chicken business is not that cheap. I mean, uh, the Ricardos and the Merckxes went into the chicken business in 1957. It basically cost Fred and Ricky roughly about 1957 dollars, roughly about 350 dollars to get started in the chicken business. That includes those uh, baby chicks that uh, Lucy bought that and let them throughout, run out throughout the house. And But, point is, 350 some bucks in 1957, you adjust it for inflation, maybe it's really expensive to get into that because it's not as, you know, as uh, Lucy did, just buy the baby chicks and just wait for them to start laying. Yeah, and the articles I've been reading, the people who they who, whose papers have contacted and talked to about doing this, they said, you know, they they had they really didn't have any idea how much it would cost to get to do the setup yeah uh, and then you know and i think they were you know they thought oh you know we buy these chicks and they'll you know they'll be able to start laying eggs pretty fast you know that isn't the case and they'll be laying eggs for a long time so we'll do that and then they didn't think about the cost of feed you know and they're seeing the cost of feeds. Mix. Chicken feed's gone up. Even, even chicken feed is not chicken feed, you know. You know that's right, say, exactly, you know, right? You know, they'll say, oh, that's just chicken feed, you know. Uh, that chicken feed's gotten pretty expensive now. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's, it's it's like ammo. I mean, people, you know, people who, you know, you, they talk about cheap ammo. Ammo's not cheap anymore, you know. And, and now, I mean, that old phrase, you know, that's not chicken feed. I mean, it's really got to do. It's like people are spending so much money on chicken feed it's, you know, the, the, the cost of it, a, uh, they would be better off buying the eggs at a store than raising yeah. the chicks. Well, you know, I tell you, a 40 pound bag of chicken feed is $16.29, which I think is still going to be high. And that's just like a generic. And then they have others that are like $29 for a 40 pound bag. You know, so it's not cheap. And you, if you get the Purina, uh, uh, start growth, uh, medicated chicken feed. For chicks, it's not. It's only like uh, it's only a twenty-five pound bag. It's twenty-seven dollars, more than a dollar a pound for her feed. So it's yeah, not, so, you know. So so ba you know, people who you know, amateurs, basically, which are a lot of people have gone into this, which happens with a lot of things, is just that they're they're not you know they're not really benefiting much except the oh, yeah. thrill, if you want to say, of, of having chickens around or getting a few eggs and stuff like that. But the economics of it, the yeah. economics basically says, go to Costco and buy their, yeah. buy their eggs. <laughs> yeah, and they're still high. For, even Costco standards are pretty high. And, and here's some other costs, okay? 
a half a gallon of orange juice or grapefruit juice, which take your pick, $4.19. That is high. The larger jugs, uh, one sale was seven ninety nine. dollars You know, the Tropicana, the larger jugs they have, I forget what the size of that is, 64 ounces maybe. But that's seven ninety nine dollars for that. And it's regular is eight forty nine. dollars uh, The prices are, I mean, a loaf of bread is $4.49, a loaf of bread. And that's not even like the fancy Pepperidge Farm kind of stuff that I like. It's just generic, you know, Myers or whatever, you know. Uh, or Wonder Bread uh, brand of bread, and it's four dollars. I mean, we can stomach the cost, you know, um, and we won't like it, but we'll buy it, and, you know. But the fact that there are many, many Americans that Joe Biden seems to just uh, think uh, everything's fine and everything's gotten so much better since he's been uh, president, you know. Um, no. Joe, I mean, a half a gallon of ice cream is $6, and that's the sale price, Don. That's the sale price. And if I zoom in, I can tell you what the regular, nope, they got the regular price covered up. But $5.99 for Briars, five nineteen for Turkey Hill. Turkey Hill used to be the bargain basement ice cream, you know. Um, and then you have the two liter bottles, Don. Not that I'm showing my age, but I remember when you could buy like Six of those for five bucks, like eighty-eight cents each. You can buy, uh, get a two-liter bottle, and uh, squirt sodas. I mean, it's the, three for five is their sale price. Uh, I mean, you buy Canada Dry for a six-pack of the bottles that aren't even sixteen-ounce bottles anymore. Um, Six forty-nine. You know, uh, it's uh, people are just you know not gonna spend money on stuff like that on these luxury items. And I have read somewhere there's a shortage of Diet Coke Zero. I mean, Coke Zero, there's a shortage. And uh, I realized that when I went to the Giant to get a bottle uh, when I was over down by Goddard. No Coke Zeros. No Diet Cokes either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're still having, I mean, you mentioned orange juice. I mean, I think there was a report just the other day about the, you know, the expectations for the orange crop in Florida. They're going to have a big problem. And so if you think it's expensive now, just wait. It's going to skyrocket. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, I don't drink orange juice. You know, uh, if I'm going to drink anything orange, I'd, I'd drink uh, Tang because Tang is really good. A byproduct of the space program, everyone, by the way. Do you ever <laughs> basis in a space program, you know, uh, gave us Tang? Tang is okay. <laughs> I like it. You know, if... Actually, now Tang comes with these little squirt bottles that you can just put into the water. I think it's been years since I've even bought those, but yeah. And I mean, the fact that, and Joe Biden at the State of the Union had the audacity to say that everything's, you know, he's cut inflation. I mean, jobs, he claimed that he's created more jobs. We're just at pre pandemic levels. It's like, you know, we lost a bunch of jobs. Now we're back to where we were, but there's still, there, Yahoo just uh, announced. Uh, layoffs. Microsoft announced additional layoffs. I mean, it's you know, we're, you know, I'm not wishing for a recession like Democrats do when there's a Republican in the White House, but I'm just saying it's like not gonna, it's not going to be, it's gonna be a bumpy ride, you know. And uh, you know, people should, you know, as I t tell young people and other people that ask, I go, I go find a port now. Don't try to find. It. Don't. I would not go job hopping right now you know and uh but you still have the service industry you know like um there's a uh, somebody was telling me um panda express managers are making nine they're putting out they're getting ninety thousand dollars and people are still not applying for those jobs at Panda Express. 90 grand is not a bad job, a uh, bad salary for managing Panda Express. Yeah, it's a little probably, you probably, you probably don't have long hours because you're the manager there. You know, it's not like you have to be there the crazy hours that the work people do. Um, and I'm just, you know, there's, if you go to, I don't know if you've been to the giant over in, uh, what giant was it? I was at just recently. It was over, uh, actually it's over by Goddard, the giant down there. And that giant, 
has turned even those regular cash register aisles, they've turned those, they've turned three of those into self checkouts too. And uh, these, you know, it's the combination of $15 minimum wage, nobody wanting to work anymore. And that's the reason why I think we're have, we're seeing a lot of this stuff. A lot of people are just saying, no, thank you. I'm not going to work. You know, I'm getting free money from the government, you know. And then yeah, you have, I mean, on, on, on self-checkout, and I've got friends of mine who will never touch one of those things, no matter where it is. I mean, I, I prefer those. But I yeah, do you, too. I'll, you know, you basically, you know, if you're a giant or a Walmart or whatever, you know, you put eight or ten of those in, a, in an area and you have you basically have one employee there to kind of monitor, take care of problems, assist customers, and it seems to work out pretty good. But that you know, they're, they're, they're kind of forced to do that in an effort to because the labor problem, you know, that they can't they can't find enough workers. And then the flip side of that is, as you said, you know, they're having to pay more and more money even to the workers that are there. So that that pushes their cost up. I mean. We're, we're, we're getting near one of those another inflection points where, uh, you know, when in, a lot of companies like inflation because, you know, they, we've had such low inflation for a long time. It's made, made it hard for them to push in, you know, to get price increases, even in their cost of increase. When inflation goes like this, they can actually start, they can actually do pretty well and pad their profits a little bit more. But now you've got, you know, you've got like Walmart's going to be pushing back. Uh, and others, I think they're going to say they're, you know, they're trying to tell these, you know, these corporations, they say, you know, we're not, you know, we're not going to accept, you know, any more price increases. You know, we, you've yep. already had several. And so, you know, they, they're kind of looking at saying, we know what our customers probably can get to. And now they're getting to the point where they can't take anything. They really can't take any more increases. So you better find a way to cut the cost of the product or something like that, because. Mm -hmm. We're not going to we're not going to absorb it and we're not going to raise our price. It's roughly about the same price of OJs in Florida, maybe a few pennies less, might be fifty cents less, but it's about the same. It's not it it's that's a good point uh, Craig brings up. You know, in the old days you did have different pricing, but now everybody's using the umbrella pricing system, so the price of orange juice is pretty much the same everywhere in the country. Uh, just like a gallon of milk is roughly about the same across the country. You know, you know, it used to be when you went in the South, you know, price of orange juice, dairy products would be a lot cheaper. You go to, you know, then it would be, say, in the Mid-Atlantic. Now it's all about the same because they manufacture everyone's learning, hey, what, we just, why don't we charge this, the high prices all over the country, you know? Yeah, I mean, they can, I mean, you know, Back in back in the old days, you know, things were not as computerized. I mean, yeah. we can all, you, you know, we can sit around and look up prices for just about anything on any site. I mean, you know, any grocery site or whatever. Yep. You can mm -hmm. do comparison. You get an idea. So everybody's checking competitors' prices on on yeah. everything. So I, I think that helps make it somewhat more competitive in the long run. But mm -hmm. you know, you can if 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 even if your cost of transportation is lower and whatever. You can probably still charge, you know, mm -hmm. something closer to a market rate. What's going on elsewhere, if that's what mm -hmm. you do? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of these people are going over to like you know, uh, Nikon and uh, Mac, Apple, and everyone. You know, where the price is exactly the same everywhere. It's not like it's. Uh, you a Nikon camera costs the same at well they're not around but Pen camera and then if you go to Rick's camera it's the exact same price it's not like you know it's going to be a different price you know well in the old days you can go to W Bell it'd be one price you go to the best company it'd be another price you know uh, and that's I think because of you know I think they can do it now and <laughs> in manufacturing they're now controlling a lot of the prices too so for they basically say you can only sell at this price. That's why, actually, if you want to buy a Nike, I'd recommend going gray market, buy a gray market one. Um, yeah, it doesn't come with a wa warranty, but, you know, something, you buy a gray market. I mean, the cameras don't have that many moving parts that are going to break. You'll get a good life out of them, you know, with the prices of things. And it just goes back to how out of touch Joe Biden is. You know, he actually thinks things are getting better. I know. And, uh, oh, let's see. The giant had, yeah, but they forced you to buy four bricks 
of ice cream and you get a five dollar you know but still why do you have to buy four why can't they divide that by four and i just buy one and they give it to me at that price i know that's not the way it works anymore it's no it doesn't and you know what i hate the most is like to buy one and get one free i remember or buy two get two free well why can't i buy one and get one free you know and it's um it's crazy that's like that's like the biggest that has got to be the biggest racket it's like oh yes oh uh, this is a, i mean can you imagine like somebody who's saying living alone and you gotta buy four bricks of ice cream to get it for eleven dollars first gonna have that ice cream sitting in the refrigerator all the way to next year <laughs> yeah I, you know i you know, I, I think you know we we have we'd have to understand how how the retail market works, and you know, grocers have very thin margins, right? In general, for the yeah. food products, I am sure that you know that with a lot of these types of things and these promos, you know, it, it's this is something where the manufacturer is saying, you know, you know, you will pay this price based on this volume. And then you can, you can, so then you can price it, you know, so a promotion, they are probably helping to underwrite that or something to, or incentivize at least giant to do that because then giant actually will make more money in the long run by selling more product, you know, meeting certain quotas and things like that. Um, it's, it's, it, those, those are, those are brutal businesses. I mean, that's just. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, and you know, Bill Clinton, you know, for the scoundrel that he was, he said, I feel your pain. Joe Biden isn't feeling anyone's pain. He does not, He is so out of touch. He's too invested in his uh, elitist, uh, you know, mentality that, you know, yeah, that's true. They should, but. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's kind of, it's kind of like what, I mean, Walmart, generally right i mean they're not walmart's not a you know an outfit that's going mm -hmm. to have like you know lots of sales or specials in their grocery aisle right mm -hmm. they they basically have that you know we're going to try to give you what we think is the best price uh, yes and lowest price and so you know it it's that's kind of a standard bearer then you can look you know in terms of where they are in the market mm -hmm. You can look at Target, which I tend to think is going to be a little higher. Then you can look at the Giants, the Safeways, the Wegmans, the yeah. Harris Teeter. And now they're all, you know, they're all about the same price. Whole Foods, Giants, Safeway, Harris Teeter, Wegmans. Wegmans still is a little pricier. And yeah. I don't even know if Wegmans is worth it. It's actually the dollar yeah. twenty-five store now, Craig. It's not even a dollar. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, dep it, dep it depends. I mean, you know, my uh, Young just went to the... She went over there to Dollar Tree the other day because some the uh, greeting cards are still a dollar, you know. Not, oh, okay, that's yeah. still I think a little high. I think I don't know. Maybe it's just and uh, well, you know, I mean, I mean, e even even for the cheapness of the products that Dollar Tree and these other dollar stores yeah. sell stuff for, is that you know their costs were even going oh. up, so they needed they needed to get some breathing back into their uh -huh. profit margins. You know, it's I probably my niece and 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 good bargains. It, it's it's true. There there are there there are a lot of people who are in that kind of that lower part of the economic scale, right? What do they do? They they will go to the Dollar Trees of the world and buy some of their groceries mm -hmm. because they sell them in small enough packages to make it cheap enough that they figure it's fine. Is it a good deal on a per ounce basis? I haven't done an analysis of that, but it works for it works for them so you know you, they're they're feeding they're meeting a need in the market um you know Lidl and aldi yeah. make have they 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 serve a niche in the market mm -hmm. see Lidl and aldi are like the jumbos and shoppers food were back in the day i think yeah. i think they're i think they're you know when i when i look at jumbo and shoppers i mean they were those two stores were still they're still kind of the, you know, the, the the model of the giants and the Safeways, but yeah. a little more bare bones. Just and then cutting some of the cost down a little bit, right? Aldi and Lidl are really bare bones in a lot of ways. Is that they, you know, they're much more limited in their selection. 
Do you remember yeah. Safeway had their low end? Uh, they had their uh, store called Food Barn, which was part of it was part of the Safeway family, and you didn't get bags. You had to buy the bags, and you get things a little bit cheaper than you would. And I think Safeway figured it out. Yeah, we're, it's not worth it, and they turned all the food parts into Safeways. It's kind of like how Food Line tried this Bloom, which was our higher end store. And Food Line said, "Oh, no one's going to buy spoiled meat at a Bloom." Like they would at Food Line, so they just turned all the Blooms back to Food Line. I think um, Food Line are they out of business? Food Line or are they still? No, in no, business? no, they're still going. They're a North Carolina company, but. What was the name of what was the name of they have they had a bear you know they had a low end store. What came what was the name of it? Was Bloom they, the low end store or was the Bloom their high end one? No, I think I think you're right. No, it wasn't Bloom because uh you know on uh three fifty five mm-hmm. if you're in if you're right by Walnut Hill area right by mm-hmm. where the MBA Express is, yeah, mm-hmm. they converted they converted. Yeah, the- it was something else. The food it, it was a food line. Yeah. Then it became something else. It was like like off brand. It was it was and it was it was it was their cheap brand store. Mm-hmm. I can't. I, but they they closed that down. I, I don't think there's anything there now. No, it's not. And I tell you, uh, yeah. Well, that's great that Lidl's coming there. Uh, where is it opening up? Do you know where Craig? Yeah, where's where is that going to be? Maybe they'll shut that uh, really crappy giant down on Old Georgia Top Road and put it in there. But I do like Lidl better than Aldi's because Aldi's likes to um, charge me for – well, not charge me. They want, it to, they want a $1 deposit for a shopping cart, and I find that offensive, frankly. <laughs> I find it offensive. You don't trust me to bring back the shopping cart like – no, that's for you know. Lidl trusts me; they let me take a shop without putting in money for it. Uh, that's why. Uh, but I think, um, I mean, basically, if I mean, uh, the, if the state of you improved anything, it just proved how out of touch and mentally deranged Joe Biden is as a president. Frankly, uh, I mean, he was out of touch on; he was wrong on everything. You know, uh, and the way the Democrats were behaving in the I know the Republicans weren't the best behaved people, but the Democrats weren't behaving any better, frankly, you know. Okay, and, I've, uh, I've been looking this up, so here I have to interrupt. The store that was called was Bottom Dollar. Bottom Dollar, yeah. Was that like, okay? A, I had, I had, sorry, I had to look that up because it was bugging the heck out of me. Yeah, I, I, I understand, you know. Uh, do you remember um, there was another grocery store called Plus? Just Plus. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. so it was like the, it was right there on George Avenue where the where there's a low tea now. That's where it used to be on Georgia Avenue. Because after Plus closed down, Scans came in there, the furniture store. Oh, that would, have, then, that would have. I mean, the Scan furniture Scan was there when I was a kid. The the scan the scan maybe the maybe the plus scan furniture store eventually turned into the Outback and Carabas. It was on that okay. end. Okay, the plus was where the low tea is. Yeah, and the where and where the low tea is and everything like that. There used to be a um. Was, was there a track auto there? A track too? auto there. Maybe it was up where the Colts is. Maybe that's where the. Plus there was, was. well, A and P had they turned they had they went to their super fresh brand in uh, yep. over there and uh, yeah we I mean we've seen a lot of different things right I mean we've seen just mm-hmm. lots of different variations yeah. some have come some have gone but there was a plus right on I mean where was the Chrysler dealer on Old George, on uh, Georgia Avenue Chrysler is that, was, is that what, the, yeah there was a Chrysler the, dealer Chrysler, you mean in yeah. Wheaton? No, no, Glenmont. It was Glenmont Chrysler Plymouth. Oh. Uh, I want to say, was it by the... It was near the cemetery. Was that, is that where the Kmart came in, maybe? Uh, Kmart was... I don't know. Kmart was there. I know the Kmart was there when I when I moved to that area in 85. Okay. I'm trying to think Because the dealership about- was there, too, in the 80s, too. Huh. 
Yeah, I don't know that that, that you at you. I want to see that tractor place where that uh, there's a well. It's not even that anymore. That's called. But there used to be a place you could rent like tractors and stuff like that. Like uh, was it a U-Haul? What was it a U-Haul rental place or something like that? That may have been it. Where it was, it was like near the Vitro plant, which is now BASF is there now. I think. Yeah, well, but the old Vitro was over there. I mean, that that became a Home Depot eventually too, right? Oh, is that what it, I thought BASF uh, moved into the old Vitro plant? Well, I think the I think it's they I think they had somebody else may have gone around. I mean, Home Depot is right in that same area, though, right? Yeah, they yeah. The bigger, they took up the bigger space. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's you know, I'm going to have to think about that dealership, though, boy. If it's I I I, I, rem- I remember the one on in Wheaton, but I don't remember the other one. Yeah, now that's just a Hyundai dealership now because I think uh, Barack Obama took away that Dodge dealership away from uh, Fitzgerald because that was a Fitzgerald dealership. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, now it's a Hyundai or a Kia dealership. I forget what it is, but I tell you, uh, yeah, I mean, and you know, uh, this, I mean, do you have any more thoughts on the State of the Union other than it was just well, horrible? I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the uh, you have a lot of you have a lot of things you got to think about with that. I mean, it was it was a weird, you know, you have Biden out there trying to tout all these things, and mm-hmm. there was definitely, you know, some some lies in there. You had Jill Biden giving a full on mouth kiss to to Doug Emhoff to Kamala Harris's husband, which was really awkward and weird. Yeah, you know that was. It's like I don't know that kind of that kind of thing gives me the shivers or nightmares. Was, like, that like, was it as awkward as the Gore, Tipper Gore and Al Gore kiss at the convention in two thousand? Yeah, but at least 90? they're married. That's true. That is true. That is true. It's like, Not what, anymore what though. Is the, what is the president's wife doing kissing on the mouth? You know, the vice president's husband. <laughs> yes, uh, Craig, you are right. Governor Sanders gave a great rebuttal. I mean. Uh, the response was, I mean, she made some great points, you know, how, you know, yeah, you know uh, it, she believed- it's, it's interesting with, with, with Sarah Sanders, because, you know, I, I, I looked at it in one way to the kind of a subliminal message there about the need for new leadership. So I'm thinking like, in my thinking, it's like new leadership, not Donald Trump, you know, <laughs> yeah. On, well, on the, the other hand, have... the left looked at it as saying, like, when she mentioned about, you know, we, we have to get away from the crazy. They also thought about that she was referring to Donald Trump. <laughs> and then and then we had but then we had Trump using true social to, be, you know, to come out with his message like he's some big victim of things and stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I just get so tired of some of that. But mm-hmm. she was good. I mean, it was I was. I was surprised at first when, you know, she was selected to do it, but I think she did do a good job and, and she went, you know, she went after the Democrats and, mm-hmm. and all of this. And, and I think that's what has to happen with that, uh, you know, and you, you, you know how effective that is. Those kind of things are when the Democrats by and large, you know, were having a cow, you know, they you know, they yeah. can't believe that she said all that and she did all that. Yeah. It's like, you know, you know, it's like it really. I mean, it's just false indignation on the Democrats. For they, they, they get they really in, <laughs> get indignant very easily about stuff. I mean, if you say, I mean, these people they, they still get riled up and angry about President Reagan. President Reagan has been gone for over ten years, and they're still all in an outrage. You know, and. I, I don't get it. The angry Democrats, you know, it just makes no sense at all to me, frankly. Also, um, a little footnote in Maryland history. It looks like our nominee for governor has moved to Pennsylvania to be uh, chief of staff for Doug Mastriano. Congratulations, Dan Cox. We wish you all the best in uh, the Quaker state. And the lieutenant governor has left the Republican Party to become start a new party the Sheffinelli party I don't know she's starting her own party now you know uh, so our nominees for governor this is the fastest I think in memory that our nominees no all of our nominees in the past stayed in the state after they lost you know uh, Dan's moved on 
Uh, Gordana has left the party, not the state. You know, and it's it's amusing a little bit, you know, with that. And uh, I would say, you know, well, well that, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe if maybe if Dan Cox, you know, takes up residence in Pennsylvania, and, and maybe he'll run for governor. Uh, you no, know, I think like, he has to be. He has to be a resident of Pennsylvania to be chief of staff for what's his name. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he uh, was just hospitalized at our retreat. We told you so. We told you and, so, and you Pennsylvanians. Apparently, apparently the New York Times, their first report on that, they revised the report because it was it was a little bit, it cast too many aspersions upon, you know, and doubts of, uh, about uh, his fitness. So they uh, they apparently came out with a, with a revision to, uh, to, to get, to take out things that would have... Uh, Given any people any doubt that he had the physical the capacity to continue on. Okay, not to be that kind. Of, okay, let me tell you. The New York Times is becoming a lot like uh, Pragda and Task. Remember back when Leonid Brezhnev had died, they didn't tell the world like five, six days later. This is, that is what, oh yeah, you know, leader, dear leader uh, Brezhnev is just doing fine. He's at his dacha right now. That's why you haven't seen him around in public, you know. They did the same thing with Chernenko. They did the same thing with Yuri Dropov. And the New York Times is doing the same thing with Fetterman. They're doing the same thing with Joe Biden. The, the president's health is justified. No, it's not. No, it's not. Just stop it. You know, these people, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, think about, I mean, you know, Biden, Biden wants to run again in 2024, apparently. So, and what the, you know, the DNC is paving the way for that to make sure that nobody challenges him by you know changing their primary calendar right and putting south carolina at the top and pushing back you know iowa and things like that and you know this isn't sitting well with a lot of democrats uh in terms of what they're doing there and i don't know i mean this i, I don't you know the republicans aren't making any changes in their calendar but yeah. uh, well, you know how expensive this is going to be for like states like new hampshire after two primaries you're going to have the Republican primary in its normal time. Then the Democrats' primary is going to come up, you know. I think the Democrat Party should be charged by the state of New Hampshire to cost to run two primaries, frankly. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. I mean, it's... it's although, it's, I mean, you know, Michigan uh, years... I remember in 1988, the Republicans had the primary in Michigan once... And then the Democrats had theirs like months and months later. So it's not unheard of, but I still think, you know, it makes more yeah, sense. I mean, the calendar doesn't always line up to say the you know, Republicans, unlike a general election when everything's at yeah. the same time, this yeah. is not the, the primary schedule is very different. They don't yeah. run. They don't run, you know, concurrently mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. that's that's the way that's the way it goes. And some some states still have a caucus versus a mm -hmm. primary you know, yeah. Then states like Texas have both. Texas yeah. has a caucus and a primary. Yeah, and then if you're, you know, but but part of the, you know, part of the thing too is that you know the this whole kind of you know politically correct movement and you know left you know left wing kind of stuff by Democrats. One of the, you know one of the reasons too that they wanted to get away from Iowa is because all these progressive leftists in the party feel that you know Iowa you know is like it's it's too white, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's not representing the diversity of the party. This whole all this diversity nonsense that keeps creeping into everywhere, uh, yeah. it's just it, ridiculous. I remember the '90s when the worst thing that we were fighting then was, uh, and uh, we all said it. It's a slippery slope, and we were we were. I think in the '90s was it gays in the military? Was that the big fight then? Not not even gay marriage. That was gays in the military. And uh, we basically, you know, put up the good fight. But then, you know, even some of our Republican friends, you know, decided, eh, it's not so bad, you know, don't ask, don't tell. And then the next thing you know, oh, we got gay, we got civil unions. Then they want gay marriage. And now they want this whole, it's like, now we're at the LGBTQZ, whatever, you know, and these transgender and all this other stuff, you know. I mean, Disney has lost a lot of money. 
when they've gone woke, they've gone broke. I mean, you think Bob Iger would jump in there? I mean, this whole the Proud family. Uh, I didn't even realize that was uh, a thing, but uh, I saw a clip on Fox's. I was outraged. You know, what do they talk? I mean, this is like this is Disney, the the network, the the folks that gave us uh, with the Witch Mountain series. You know. Uh, it gave us, uh, well, I didn't like Old Yeller, but a lot of people seem to like Old Yeller. I didn't like Old Yeller. Well, I know, I know that the Fox News website, you know, there was a opinion piece on there by a, a, a woman who uh, talked about, you know, going to Disney with her, taking her family and everything like this. Mm -hmm. But it, it was hard because just, just things that, you know, I mean, we were used to that have been, you know, icons, you know, of the park have either been have either been changed or or there's warning. You know, they'll be like, this does not reflect, you know, our our feelings anymore. You know, you know, kind of kind do of they have, do they have like warning signs, sure. like, you know, because it might be insensitive or whatever. I mean, I think she was talking about there was, uh, you know, the bibbity bobbity boo. Uh, it was a yeah. place where girls, I guess, could do like makeup or whatever and do little fairy mm -hmm. things or whatever. And they've completely changed it. I mean, they, they've just they've just thought they've become so sensitive to these cultural, you know, social justice people and all this attack on our yes. culture that all, it's like you can't do any of these things anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's absolutely, you know, ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, Apple, they like a look, I mean, look at look at all those Disney things that we knew. You cannot, you cannot air. You know, I mean, you know, Bambi and all these things. You know, you know, if they're going to do anything, the pop, you know, they, you know, they're trying to distance themselves from the from the classics, or reboot them, like you're talking about, even like a cartoon like The Proud Family, and make yeah. them even up, update them to reflect all these other new cultural norms yeah. that are going on out there. Hey, do you think they have a trigger warning outside the American Adventure section at Epcot? You know, this is gonna we're gonna be saying you're gonna see nice things about America. You know, uh, do you think they have trigger warnings? <laughs> you know, next time I go to Florida, I may just go down there just to see if they have the trigger warnings listed there. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, don't know you, I don't know if you saw this. I mean, you know, it's it's a little bit. There was a there's a player for the uh, Brooklyn Nets, and they were just. They had won a game uh, just the other night, and they were kind of joking around. And there had been there had just been the NBA trade line had just passed, and there had been some changes in some of the players. And there had been a reference to like, you know, oh yeah, these new guys, you know, there are some good looking guys. And one of the other players is like, it's like, oh, we've had we've we've always had good looking guys, you know, no homo, you know, or something like that. And by saying that, by using that. He got uh -huh. fined forty thousand dollars by the NBA because that's a that's an epithet. That's a gay epithet, right? A slur. Yes. Forty thousand right. forty thousand dollars. Okay. He's now had to apologize. He's out forty thousand bucks. Probably not the probably not the best use of, of words in today's uh -huh. culture. But at the same point in time, I mean, he wasn't really he, he was just throwing that out there he's in and how do we know he wasn't it was he was not shortening it for homo sapien <laughs> hey that's a good point <laughs> you know he could have been saying homo sapien no homos here we have just a bunch of uh, non-humans you know that's why we're so good <laughs> and, and you gotta and you gotta love it too because the players are you know most of these players are black right yeah yeah, you know they're also they're also being accused of being you know being anti-gay and doing all these things. There there isn't a, there isn't anyone who you know you just can't say anything. You can't do anything. It's just yeah, it's yeah. And here's and here's something else for you. Uh, the way these people carry on. I mean, by the way, the New York Islanders. Thank you for standing up to the uh, the collective, which is the NHL, by saying we will not comply with your demands. Oh, for the pride uniforms shirt. for yes. the Pride Night? Yes. Yeah. They they are like Captain Picard standing up to the Borg. I was I was surprised because you know these these sports leagues have just caved in big time, right? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, we have we are on black, you know, we're on we're still on Black History Month. 
And so a lot, most NBA players on the sidelines, they wear oh, Black yeah. Lives Matter or other things like that, promoting mm-hmm. causes, you know, on the sidelines. But, you know, I mean, what if, what if in January some some players had decided to, you know, to uh, wear, you know, something about being pro-life, right? You mm-hmm. know, that type of thing. No, no, there's no way they would have been allowed to do that. Yeah. I mean, remember Tim Tebow? Tim Tebow was raked over the coals for praying, and then when uh, maybe if Tim Tebow said, "Oh, I'm just kneeling for the co- for the uh, because of the national anthem," they would have said, "Oh, that's fine." But since he was kneeling to pray, Tim Tebow was drummed out of the NFL, and the fact that he had a not the best arm, sorry, arm. Yeah, I mean, he yeah, he, he was he was never going to be an NFL star, but. There were, there, the spotlight was on him, not really for his. I mean, he's a great athlete. He just didn't mm-hmm. have enough talent to. Yeah, he's to no play. Bo Jackson, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he's no Bo Jackson, or to play baseball. But he, but I give him yeah. credit for for giving that a try. But yeah, he his, did try baseball. After that. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah the baseball thing. The baseball thing was a was an even bigger flop for yeah. him. But, you know, but why not? I mean, and you know the Mets. The Mets knew that he would draw a crowd in the minor leagues, so they were well, mm-hmm. they were willing to to go ahead and do yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it, there, so the Orioles had him. We, 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 we never sold out at the Frederick Keys game. The Orioles had him, or at Bay Sox, you know, games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, I mean, I, by I way, went, Disney's going to release the second season or third season of Mandalorian coming up on what March first. Yeah, do you think, yeah, with all the people that have canceled Disney Plus, do you think Mandalorian numbers are not going to be as good as they were before? It's it's hard, but really, I mean, you know, the only that's about, about the only thing I'm watching on Disney Plus are the Star Wars related things. So it's like I haven't watched anything on Disney for quite a while now. But, you know, we've got the Disney bundle because my boys like the sports pack part of it and mm-hmm. There's some, there's some old, you know, some ABC programs and stuff like that on mm-hmm. Hulu. So I'll watch that. But, uh, you know, like the what wasn't the Wakanda Forever is on there now, and I'm like, I'm not feeling it. No, it is. I'm sorry. Black Panther was a great movie. It was a great movie because it was a great story. It had nothing to do with the fact that I had to deal with Wakanda, which never existed. There was never a country called Wakanda. That was not never touched by outsiders, you know. Just like there's no place uh, like Atlantis where, uh, oh, eagles all the way, Craig. Eagles all the way. Why, Dwight? Why, Dwight? What do you mean, why? The eagles. I mean, uh, yeah. It's Philadelphia. Ugh. <laughs> I know, I know. But they do have good pizza in Philadelphia. And, and there was a time when I felt safer in Philadelphia than I did in Baltimore. Uh, that's saying something. I, I mean, I, I think. I mean, I, I think the Eagles will win by something like thirty-one twenty-four thereabouts. But Patrick mm-hmm. Hol- McCombs, to me, is still an X factor. I mean, mm-hmm. if he's healthy, you yep. know, it's going to be a problem. Jalen Hurts has had a, just a you know a monstrous season for them. They're, the Eagles' defense is superb. Uh, mm-hmm. So you know, it's this is going to this is going to be an interesting game now. I haven't watched an NFL game for you know six plus years now. I'm not watching, and I haven't watched the Super Bowl for longer than that. So yeah. I, I'll be checking the scores on you know online, but I won't be watching a minute. Oh yeah, I have no attention to watching. It's like a waste of four hours of my day, frankly. I've been, I just been, I've been just trying to track down the Super Bowl ads online here and there to see what people yeah. are spending their money on. And by the way, those Super Bowl ads aren't what they used to. They used to be so much better. They used to be so much better. Well, you you know. Think about the Super Bowl ads. I mean, a year ago, you know, crypto was big and they spent tons and tons of money. And what do we've had in the, in the last year? Crypto has pretty much imploded. Not not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if uh, I tell you, uh, I think Cadillac's supposed to have a big ad about their all new EV lineup that they've got coming out. Cadillac, you know. But I tell you, you know, I just joined a Facebook group on, uh, what do they call them, long-haul station wagons. And those are the big Vista Cruisers and uh, the, you know, Cadillac had a station wagon. It was a, it actually had six doors, the Cadillac station wagon. Wow. Uh, 
and uh, they, you know, it's like they were. I mean, they Phil Schlafly called it when she said the EPA is coming for her station wagon, and they did. And the reason we all have SUVs today is because they don't have made up make station wagons anymore. I mean. Everybody had one. I mean, you probably had a station wagon growing up as well, Don, right? You know, not, not growing up being the only child, but, you know, we did have a Taurus wagon. Had a Taurus yeah. wagon when I was raising the kids. Before yep. we got, we didn't I get remember that, yeah. We didn't get a minivan until... The kids were out of the house. <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to think. I think, the, I think, I think Stephen was 10 years old, so... Uh-huh. You know, Christy, Christy would have been about 16. So, you know, we got, we didn't, I don't think we got the minivan until yeah, later, which, you know, until the kids were in their, you know, almost teen years. So they missed a lot of their younger years, mm-hmm. but uh, just a cruiser. What the heck was that? that was, that's actually, a, it's a Chrysler. You know, I did not realize, I also thought Vista Cruiser was Oldsmobile because, you know, Oldsmobile always had the cruiser. You had the Cutlass Cruiser, you had the Custom Cruiser, you know, but it was a Chrysler. Oh, the Malibu station. You know, the, you know that was either the Malibu was considered a mid-sized car, Craig, and that the 1970s Malibu station wagon is larger than some of the full-size cars they have today. But you know, a nod to uh, icon. Old, Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser. Huh. Oh, was it Oldsmobile? I thought, somebody told me it was a Chrysler. I thought I knew it had to be a. See, you were right. Uh, from, you know, they from 1964 to 1977. Hmm. Yeah, and then it was replaced by the Custom Cruiser. And then they had the little baby station wagons, the Cutlass Cruisers, which was the small one. Ah, yes. And Mercury had this one. I think, I forget what it was. It was, uh, I don't know exactly what the name of it, but Mercury had, Mercury and even uh, Chevrolet had the Caprice Cruiser, uh, Caprice Classic station wagon. Where the tailgate would go underneath, it like slide under. I think they called those the clamshell cars because the top would go into the roof and the bottom would go underneath the car. So the tailgate, uh, it was a really that was a great era in cars. I loved Herb Gordon's. They had the best service department around for cars. Now Herb Gordon's is gone. Only. Family-owned dealership, I think that's around, is really uh, Sport Chevrolet from the old era of uh, cars. Then you got the mega dealers like Dark Cars, which are technically yes, it's a family, and you got King Pontiac and you know, but Fitzgerald and those guys, those like the mega ownership groups and stuff like that. Fox Nation and Auto Nation, or whatever it is. By the way, never buy a car from Auto Nation; they're all a bunch of crooks. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I will what? say I will say one thing about this car discussion. It shows how old we are. I know, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Including Craig. <laughs> yeah. And I tell you, uh, yeah, I mean, Philip Schlafly was right. They came for our station wagons. Now they're coming for our SUVs. You know, and the reason, I mean, a lot of people say, why do they have a big SUV? Because I, I need the space. I mean, just remember, we used to take your Taurus. We'd fill it up with stuff on AIM trips. We'd have boxes and boxes. You could load that thing off, you know, and uh, now you'd load up an SUV or a minivan, you know. Right. But, uh, yeah, that's the way the world is, you know. But uh, we're at final thoughts. We're about to go into extra innings again. Uh, speaking of extra innings. No, I don't, we, don't need, we don't need to go to 830 or anything again. That was not Yeah. Oh, we used to do this show for three hours in the past. Yeah. Maybe like a three-hour show. I'm, I'm, I'm too old and I get too tired. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, so final thoughts, Don. Go. Final thoughts. Um, thoughts and prayers to the people in Turkey and Syria. I mean, this this earth, this earth, double earthquake whammy that they've had has been terrible. Um, over 21,000 dead at the last count, and then it's going to continue to grow. Uh, you know, the, the destruction is horrendous. The, the pictures of of people that are that are actually you know holding the hands of their dead loved ones are still under the rubble those are heartbreaking the stories are heartbreaking uh, to see all of this um, you know I don't I don't know whether or not you know the Turkish president Erdogan how how he's uh, how he's how he's going to navigate this I mean he's actually got an election 
I, I guess, coming up. And so uh, this may affect the election to a certain extent. I don't know. But uh, more, you know, it has been it's been great to see the efforts by so many people providing so much in goods and whatever, just relief efforts that have been underway to try to help these people because they need it. It's, politics have got to just be put aside. We have got to help these people uh, oh, rebuild yes. and and just you know get what they need to survive at this point in time. And as, as I understand, the weather's pretty cold at this time, so that another yeah. another factor that's also you know affecting them at this point in time. So that's that's one thing we we talk, we chatted a little bit about this in the pre before the show started about kind of AI. So Google is going, they're, they've, they're launching BARD at some point. I want to compete a little bit with chat GPT, which, you know, Microsoft took a, took a position in some investment in and has been putting it as part of their Bing, uh, you know, search engine and stuff like that. So people, and they've lined that up. So this will be, this will be interesting. I, well, you know, Google's uh, AI, it got a math problem wrong. Yeah, they did. They had they they had some things that they did wrong. It, it was not it was not the best launch, and I, I I understood they lost they as a result of their kind of botched launch. The the stock lost 160 billion dollars mm -hmm. in market value or something like that. So that was kind of crazy. Hey uh, Google, maybe you didn't fire some of your developers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your marketing people. Somebody goofed that up big time. I did see this uh, article or this, uh, there was an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal this past week about uh, California and the legal pot business. And I, and I thought this was interesting because I had, I, I've never been in favor of this, you know, legalizing yeah. marijuana deal. Um, and it hasn't, it, you know, one of the promises or one of the, uh, you know, was that the, uh, by making this thing, you know, by making pot legal, mm -hmm. it would wipe out the illegal trade, right? Why? But it hasn't happened. No. With with the taxes and regulation on legal pot, it has actually made the illegal pot business, the black market, has thrived mm -hmm. so much so that Curaleaf, which has had a very big operation in California, is pulling out because they can't make any money selling pot legally. So it's yeah. just California yeah. is showing that they they've totally, they've totally messed this whole thing up. That this was a bad idea for, to begin with, and, uh, and here's something else for you, Don. You know, like we're all there for Nancy Reagan's "Just Say No" campaign, right? And now we've got the fentanyl problem. It's like you know we're making it okay for people to take drugs and whatnot. Now, you know, maybe we'd stuck with the "Let's Just Say No" and didn't glorify drug use. Maybe we wouldn't. The fentanyl problem would not be so bad. You know, yeah. and look, look, I mean, yeah, so I mean, and look at, I mean, the, you know, the, the pot thing, you know, spurred, you know, edibles, right? Now we've got yep. this whole thing about edibles and we see little kids getting sick because of edibles now. Yes. And it's crazy. You know, it's, uh, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, yeah. it's a mess. I will, I will say this, you know, with this opioid crisis, I mean, when we've seen quite a bit in Virginia and some other areas, I mean, there was a news story the other day, you know, High Point High held a, they did a parent meeting for, oh, yeah. you know, on, on yeah, yeah. and they actually handed out Narcan to the parents. Yeah. Because now, how about you tell the kids not to do drugs? You know, just, you know, just do the, just say no. Cause you know, when you don't say no, it's like saying yes. You know, uh, Nancy Reagan had it right. President Reagan had it right. To just, we need to bring back the just say no campaign. But you know, now nobody has the stomach to do this. We'll talk, speak out against it on either side. You know, there's a few people on our side of the aisle, actually more people on our side of the aisle that understand that, hey, you know, this is why we have the fentanyl problems. You know, maybe if your kid wasn't taking crack or whatever, you know, you would have to worry about the fentanyl. We would need to give you Narcan, you know, frankly, you know. Uh, how about you teach your kids not to do drugs? Yeah, and, I, and I, don't, I don't think enough people got behind, you know, Governor Hogan when he was trying, when he, you know, when he's trying to fight the opioid crisis, right? I yeah. mean. You know, he, I mean, he, these people. I mean, you've got states like Seattle, uh, not Seattle, uh, Oregon, and Washington State that want to legalize heroin. They want to have safe sites where they can go shoot up their heroin, so they can have Narcan. You know, I'm sorry, no, no. You know, these people are they're part of the problem. Also, you know, don't give me old boo hoo these addicts. You know, they did. It's not their fault. Yes, it is their fault. Who's told them to start using drugs? You know, 
I'm sorry. It is. I am going to blame uh, drug addicts also, frankly. It is their fault. You made the choice to experiment, and look where you are now, you know. It's yeah. maybe harsh. People don't want to hear that, but I'm sorry. Uh, it's crazy. You know, uh, it's like, it's, you know, it's like things that were not socially acceptable 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, or now it's just like, you know, those, and now we're the pariahs for having traditional values and, you know, saying drugs are bad. We're the bad guys, you know, for saying that, you know, uh, these aren't immigrants, they're illegal aliens. We're the bad guys saying that these guys are lawbreakers. We're the bad guys for telling people that, um, you know, oh, shoplifters should be prosecuted, not, oh, we're not going to prosecute shoplifters. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. You know, it's, they've taken, you know, uh, carjackings off as a violent crime. You know, it's like, it's this soft on crime. I'm sorry, I'm, on a, I'm, on a, I'm getting on a soapbox now. <laughs> Yeah, but you're you're on a roll. I mean, the thing is, you're you're right though. When it comes, you know, when it comes particularly to the drug case, I mean, the uh, you know exactly what did the politicians think was going to happen yeah. when you when you're basically legalizing mm -hmm. illicit substances? Mm -hmm. You have now normalized them, right? You're basically saying yeah. it's okay. We're going to make we're going to make these legal. Yeah. We're going to set up or we're going to set up a safe place to shoot up heroin. What is the message that we are sending yeah. to the young people and, of America? And here's the thing. Cigarettes that's where you could you had to be, I think, 18 to buy cigarettes. And we didn't know anybody under 18 that was smoking, right, Don? You know, we were yeah. growing up and come on, you know, it's like what do you think? You know, they go, Well, you have to be 21 to buy these drugs or something, whatever age, you know, they've got on there. Yeah. And we didn't know anyone under 18 that bought cigarettes, frankly. You know, it's crazy. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, and, and as bad as cigarettes are for your long-term health, you're not going to smoke a, a six-pack. You know, you're not going to smoke a pack of cigarettes and then overdose or something, we, right? You know, yeah, you 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 get a little bit of fentanyl on you know on your skin, you're dead. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, I mean, exactly. You know, th this you know where things are unfortunately just out of control, and the politicians are to blame for this. They didn't stand up. They they've normalized this. They've sent the completely the wrong message yeah. to the kids mm -hmm. and the parents. Yeah. We need more parents to come back and get, you know, I like, you know, kind of forgot about the whole just say no. And the Nancy Reagan be a parent for crying mm -hmm. out loud, be a parent. I mean, you see MTV has a show called 16 and pregnant where they glorify unwed mothers. They freaking glorify that. I'm sorry. You know, it's, what is it? Uh, I just saw the commercial a couple of days ago where some woman, some girl was pregnant again. And not married with a different dad. I'm like, really? You're we're glorifying this sort of stuff, you know? It's uh, it happens, you know. But come on, let's not glorify it. Let's not let's just not glorify these things. You know, everything you know that we used to we were taught to that is wrong now. It's like become socially acceptable. You know, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, and you know, part of the idea here was that they were, you know, you by by legalizing a lot of these things is that you. You kind of clean up, you know, the drug dens and all yeah. these the shooting, all these things like this, but it hasn't happened, right? No, it hasn't. It, it doesn't. It it just creates two classes of, of things there in terms of mm -hmm. that. It's like how convenient you can go down to a dispensary and and pick out you know your different varieties of pot or whatever, <laughs> but but there there's a there's a price to pay for that. You've got a retail price plus a very heavy federal tax. Well, you know. People who really want to, you know, people want to get hot. They, they want a cheap drug, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and so that's just what happens. I mean, you know, and you see how you see how much the, you know, a lot of the drugs have been, they've been cut. And, you know, why is, why they lace fentanyl and all these other substances in there and they do these things and they make the drugs even more dangerous than they were initially at their, at their strength when they were first, you know, you know, cold and put together. So this is just, you know, we're, we're in a crisis, but politicians yeah. don't see it. No, they don't. They don't. They really don't. All right. Any other and then, final thoughts? Yeah, and the last thing is that I almost hate to say it. I'm going to say Orioles magic because pitchers and catchers are coming to town. They're going to be reporting. Yes, things. they are. But that'll be the last yes. time. That'll be the last time I say Orioles magic because to me there is none. Uh, I don't know. That's what we thought <laughs> last year too. Remember, look how well they did. I mean, they finished better. But they than didn't expected. do anything on the off season hardly. I mean, they they could they had a chance to open up. Well, that's because the rebuilding is over. Didn't you hear the was it the GM last week or the week before said, "Oh yeah, uh, our rebuilding is over, officially over now." 
guess who gets fired when they lose? They start off at zero and twenty three. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, last year was a great season for them, but boy, I don't know. Yeah, that's probably the biggest magic to come. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is I'm looking, for the I'm looking back at that article though about that. Is it they're going? Is they're rolling out nationwide on the twentieth? Yeah. So and, another, and another ten days. So whether or not they make it here before then or after then, I don't here know. Here it's always been around the twenty second. Yeah, that's why I've got twelve days. You know. And uh, I'm thinking maybe we could do a little Shamrock event, but uh, that's to be seen. Uh, let's see. My final thoughts, uh, I've got a bunch of them. One is that uh, Governor Westmore, what are you thinking? What are you thinking, you crazy lefty? You know, uh, you've got, uh, they've got this new transgender bill that's working its way, and then they've got ranked choice voting, and then they've got all these other things, you know. Uh, oh, that's right. There you go. I like that. I do like that idea. I don't like cherry pies, though. And I really don't like care for McDonald's cherry pies. <laughs> And then you get the apple pie or something then or whatever. No, I don't like any of their pies. You know, I'm really not a big pie person. But I do want to try the ice cream pies. I've heard that's a thing, and I want to try one of those. Those would be good. And Craig, don't they have a don't they do a, a like a strawberry and cream pie or, as a special thing too once in a while? At McDonald's. Yeah, they also do a custard pie. Hmm. And, uh, uh, also, now they got those uh, imitation Cinnabons at McDonald's now for uh, over at breakfast times there. And by the way, McDonald's chocolate chip cookies are the best. Yes, it is. And we've got a big celebration for Pie Day, March 14th. You know, and we've got a very special speaker that's coming for that. And uh, oh, my other final thoughts. Uh, yeah, 12 days. For Shamrock Shakes. I know they say the 20th, but I I was there last year on the 20th and they did not have Shamrock Shakes at all. They had it on their kiosks. They had it on the, you could order it. Then when you got it, oh, we don't have Shamrock Shakes. So here's a vanilla shake instead. You're still stewing over that. <laughs> I know. It's like, you know, I almost feel like take it. <laughs> they say an elephant but, never forgets. I know. It's like, it's hard. You know, I mean, I still, my sister, uh, when... She was probably, let's see, I was five. So she was about 16, 17. She stepped on one of my matchbox cars and split it in half. And I bring that up every opportunity I get. You know. Uh, and she, you know, so and she goes, why don't you let that go? You didn't even like that car. I go, it's the principle of the matter. <laughs> But uh, I remember I was telling Nikita that I go, your mom's got big feet. You better watch, you know, like uh, I think my sister was telling her to clean her room, you know. And I go, yeah, Nikita, you better clean the room because your mom's got big feet. She walks and she'll start uh, cracking your toys in half and stuff like that. Uh, my other final thought is, um, let's see, CPAC starts March one. Also, Charles County has their Lincoln Reagan dinner on March first. It's in uh, Waldorf. Their speaker is uh, Colonel Allen West. And go buy a ticket. Go to the Charles County Republican Central Committee's website. Buy a ticket. They're a crazy, crazy, crazy low price of $100. Uh, go on support uh, support James and the Charles County GOP. They do they do a lot of hard work down there. they got some great candidates down there. So go support Charles County. And my final, final thoughts is... Um, Everybody, uh, I, I was just, uh, what do you call it? I don't know how this popped up, but uh, on YouTube. Um, and when Craig mentioned the Walton, that's what got me thinking. Because the Walton's creator created Falcon Crest. Uh, the ex-Mrs. Uh, ex Reagan's uh, series, you know, Jane Weinman. Uh, Falcon Crest. And uh, I was on YouTube. And once, evidently, this whole chronological... Uh, what is it? It was one for like a million years, and they did the whole. They condensed the season in five minutes, which I thought was hilarious. But uh, I was never old enough to stay up late enough to watch. And then when I was old enough to stay up to watch, I didn't want to watch it. 
You know, uh, I think there's a mystery of not being able to see something you can't see in the you know, But anyways, uh, but yeah, check it out. Falcon Crest, all their all the seasons like five ten minutes condensed. It's really great, and it's a woman who's probably was uh, kicking herself. She could have been first lady, but instead she was. Uh, she just had to do a show on CBS instead of living in the White House for all that time. <laughs> but anyways, uh. Good night, everyone. We'll see everyone uh, next week. And also, tune in for Direct Line this Wednesday. It is Governor Allen and Governor Ehrlich, the Chesapeake Governors. Take care. Good night. See you later.